Hello friends, this video on Amines part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next is ammonolysis of alkyl halide. This is another a new method to prepare. So it is of alkyl halide. So alkyl halide is a form Rx, right? That is my alkyl halide. So we have discussed this in one full chapter alkyl halide. So you take any alkyl halide, also called haloalkanes also called haloalkanes, you treat this with aqueous or alcoholic ammonia, NH3. What you get is amines. See, I have my amine, right? And I react this guy with Rx, this Rx. So what will happen is, one of the hydrogen will be replaced with R and HCl will come out. So what you get is NH2R. Correct? So I have this NH3. I'm reacting with Rx. So what will happen is this will come out and this nitrogen will get attached to this. Correct? And again you will add more Rx. You have NH and to 2R two here now, right? You add more Rx, you get NR3. You add more Rx, you get R4 and X. And this is a quaternary ammonium salt. We will discuss about this later. Yes, this is quaternary ammonium salt. So this is how it happens. You add Rx, one hydrogen is replaced with R, add one more Rx, that is my alkyl halide, another hydrogen is replaced with R, add one more Rx, you keep doing it. Correct? And this process is called ammonolysis. This is the process is called ammonolysis. Here, the CX bond breaks, that is Rx in this right, this bond breaks, by NH3. The ammonia is the one which breaks this Rx bond or CX bond. So this is carried out at a sealed tube. This reaction is carried out at a sealed tube at a high temperature of 373 Kelvin. So here my NH3 actually is nitrogen. It behaves as a nucleophile. Let's see the reaction mechanism for this. So I have, let's suppose, NH3 here. Nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons. I have, let's suppose, they react with CH3 Cl. Chlorine being more electronegative, try to attract electron toward it. So slightly negative charge. Carbon gets slightly positive charge. Since carbon has positive charge, this has lone pair of electrons. This will attack this carbon. This will attack this carbon and this chlorine will go off, right? Because Chlorine is a good living group. So with this, what you get is something like this. CS3. Now since nitrogen has given electron to this carbon, nitrogen develops slightly positive charge. Nitrogen has a positive charge. Nitrogen is an electronegative element. Nitrogen won't like it. Somebody has to leave. Hydrogen is a good living group. It will leave in this fashion. So it will become CS3 and nitrogen will get back its lone pair because this will break in this format. And the same reaction happens again if you react with let's suppose C2H5Cl, so one of the hydrogen will be replaced. So this is the reaction mechanism. I have Rx or CS3Cl. Chlorine has slightly negative charge, more electronegative, carbon has slightly positive charge, right? Because the chlorine is more electronegative, so this nitrogen will attack this carbon you will get something like this, chlorine will go off, good, good living group, nitrogen it develops a positive charge, nitrogen being electronegative element, won't like the positive charge, somebody has to leave, hydrogen leaves. Right. But there is a disadvantage for this process. What is that? See, the disadvantage is that if you see, if you add Rx to this ammonia, you see you get a first degree, one degree, 
you are getting two degree you are getting three degree and you're getting quaternary ammonium salt also it's a mixture of one degree two degree and three degree amines and quaternary ammonium salt and this very difficult to purify difficult to separate one degree two degree and three degree amines but if excess of ammonia is used then my one degree amine is produced at a large extent or if extent excess of rx is used then my quaternary amine uh, am salt is produced at the large extent if you see logically also if you react ns3 with rx if you put this as excess what will happen is this reaction will go till end correct and you will see more of in fact 90 percent of r4 n plus x minus and but if you see this reaction if you use excess of ammonia so what will happen is this reaction will happen only at this point because you have more of ammonia and less of rx to react right so you'll get 90 percent of nh2 so with that you can actually get 90 almost 90 95 percent but it's still difficult to produce pure ammonia because it's difficult to separate one degree two degree and three degree amides correct and we talk about the order of reactivity of haloalkanes. We have already talked about that a lot in haloalkane chapter. Ri is more reactive than RBr than RCl. Okay. Why? Because uh, this Ri is this iodine is very big in size. If you see, iodine is this much big. Then you have bromine. Then you have chlorine. This is bromine. Let's suppose this is chlorine. This is iodine. So if you compare the size difference is too high, so it, it is easy to group. I minus is a good leaving group. So this is more reactive. This is something which we have seen in depth in the hello alkene chapter. If you want to understand this, you can watch that chapter once again. So this is my amenolysis of alkyl halide where you have this ammonia, you react with hello alkene and you get mixture of products. And this happens with 373 Kelvin. And here NH3 it is ammonia B gives to the nucleophile. This is my reaction mechanism that happens, right? And so the, there's a disadvantage of this process that is you get mixture of one degree, two degree, three degree, and uh, ammonium salt, quaternary ammonium salt. But if you want, if you can go for extreme, you can have excess Rx, you get 90% of this ammonium salt. If you use excess ammonia, you get 90% of this one degree amine. Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality educational videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot for watching.